carry out Suji's monthly aid distribution in Cambodia, volunteers conduct home visitations to deliver supplies and care. We learn about why it's difficult to grasp the actual number of autism cases in Taiwan and the changes in diagnostic methods. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Suji volunteers in Cambodia hosted a monthly aid distribution for the underprivileged in Phnom Penh and Minxi area. In addition to delivering rice and daily supplies to the care recipients, volunteers also conducted home visitations to understand more about their living conditions. Having nowhere to live, these underprivileged residents live under the tree. When city volunteers deliver rice to them, they found their living environment is surrounded by garbage. You had better clean up your living environment because it would affect children's health. A bag of 20 kilograms of rice can feed the poor families for a few days. The senior who has mobility problems lives in a wooden bill's house. This bedridden senior keeps expressing gratitude after receiving subsidies from the volunteers. After conducting home visits many times, volunteers have known well about their whereabouts. This care recipient who is on a wheelchair comes here very often because a boss may give him a tip each time. What surprised many volunteers is that he has saved the tips and now he wants to donate his coin bank. <laughs> After listening to Master Zhen Yan's teachings at the regular aid distribution, these residents understand that there are still many people around the world needing help. As we saw in the video, we learned that doing good deeds is not a privilege of the rich. We should start to carry out the act of giving. Although these care recipients lack sufficient daily supplies, they are still willing to contribute their share, as they never hesitate to donate their coins to help other less fortunate people. In Turkey, more than 20 Syrian college students who have received such a scholarship took the initiative to visit 50 refugee families. They hope by visiting and chatting with the refugees, they can help their fellow countrymen stay strong in Turkey. Three and a half year old Abdullah has lived in Turkey for half a year. This is what he remembers of Syria. Oh. <laughs> Why did he come to Turkey? This is the reason his father gives him. Another nine-year-old refugee child cannot leave his dad because his dad needs him. I take my father to the mosque. My father does not have eyes. The atrocities of war have made the children more mature. The college students who visit them also fled from Syria. The refugee children's words also express their memories of hometown. The calls of our fellow countrymen from Syria have left a deep impression in me. As they cry, my heart is also crying. There are many sad stories. I want to visit them often and chat with them to help them forget the pain. <laughs> Having accepted Tzuji's help, these students know that only love and care can help their fellow countrymen stay strong in this foreign country. In Qinglong town of Yunnan, China, Tzuji volunteers have been providing monetary aid to a family in Shitoudi village. The father cannot work due to work-related injury and the mother suffers from high blood pressure. Therefore, the daughter has to do the household chores. Being inspired by Jinsi aphorisms and Tzuji volunteers, the daughter has decided to donate her hair to help patients who lost their hair due to illness. 
In remote Shitoudi village, the Shi residence is actually a house built with mud and stone. Since Mr. Shi can no longer work due to work-related injury, and his wife suffers from high blood pressure, Tsuji has been providing them with monetary aid. Living a frugal life, they've saved up to help other less fortunate people. Their 16-year-old daughter, Xu Man, who has to do most of the household chores, studies very hard. How do you judge who are the most fortunate people? Only those with love are the most fortunate. On each visit, the volunteers tell stories of love and share Jinsi aphorisms, inspiring Xu Man. Xu Man, who also wants to help others, has decided to donate her hair to patients who lost their hair. <laughs> Cutting off her 60 centimeter long hair, Xu Man is filled with the joy of giving. <laughs> The volunteers appreciate Shima for giving of herself, spreading love to other less fortunate people. Thank you, hair grows quickly. Since you are young, it will grow back in about two weeks. Last year, Typhoon Napatak devastated Haidong Xianglan village. A total of 60 residences experienced heavy damage and were no longer habitable. Over the past year, many people have suffered in despair, though the farmland is now being planted with quinoa and mango. It shows that the storm hasn't damaged the spirit of Xianglan village. The square in front of this temple is a lively cooking scene as fragrant smells fill the air. These bamboo leaves are laid out for Zhongzi ahead of the Dragon Boat Festival here in Shanglan Village. These noble hands cleaning this glutinous rice belong to Chen Yulan, who is 60-some years old and is a traditional Hakka daughter-in-law. Her husband's ancestors moved from the west to Taitong. Today, she is part of a large group as everyone comes together to wrap Zhongzi. Despite the holiday, many have mixed emotions during this difficult time. Before, this was an area where the Hakka raised cattle. People used to ask me where we stayed, and I would say in this barn. With the Hakka's hard-working spirit, Chan Yulan continues to live in an old house and doesn't have use of air conditioning in the summer, with no sofa in the house either. However, her house isn't a problem anymore. I think that self-pity doesn't really help. A few months after the disaster, we saw that everyone has sort of a pain smile on their face, as this was the only way to deal with the matter. She shows photos on her phone related to the disaster. She has so many memories associated with this house, so she believes that it is very important to restore it. The construction of these brick houses in a traditional Hakka courtyard shape includes lots of bricks, which involve lots of labor. There are many like Chen Yulan in Shanglan village who were affected by Typhoon Napartak on July 8th of last year. These old-fashioned houses saw their roof tiles lifted off as 300 people and 60 residences were deemed unlivable. I didn't think that it was so serious and I could still live here, but now I see that all the roof tiles in my room have been blown away and I don't know what to do. I'm already so old right now. We need iron work to repair the roof, and now it is only temporarily covered with a top to prevent the rain from dripping inside. These tops can prevent the typhoon, so there's just no way to live here. With many having no home to live in, many villagers became quite concerned and discussed rebuilding the village. But because of property rights issues, these discussions became difficult to pursue as a charity stepped in and found a place for them to reside and then rebuild their homes.
This house was built in 1979. New roof tiles were added as all the original tiles were blown off, meaning we had to replace them. Now it doesn't leak at all. The Taiping moved from Yunlin to Shanglan village years ago. He is grateful that Ziji helped him repair the roof, as the disaster had left him broke because of the agricultural losses he also suffered. <laughs> it's been three years without a sugar apple harvest. It will take at least three to five years to get a harvest of about 9,000 U.S. dollars. Through this low period in their life, these villagers continue working and replanting as they are now seeking new opportunities. Now in this era of extreme climate conditions, devastation from storms like Typhoon Napartak may be inevitable, as they must take it as a careful reminder. In the past few years, we have been dealing with soil and water disasters, and we forget about the wind. I believe that God is giving us a warning. While many are not trying to alarm anyone, the presence of climate change will increase the probability of more such incidences in the future. Preparation should be made to prevent such damage in the future as everyone doesn't want to forget the lesson from this difficult period of time. There are some 13,000 people with autism in Taiwan, which is five times the number 15 years ago. One of the reasons behind the increase is changes in diagnostic methods. However, the lack of census data on autism makes the actual number of cases difficult to grasp. In fact, if I wasn't the mother of an autistic child, I would not know that this disease is autism. On the street, some people simply feel that I do a poor job of parenting my child. Autism, as the name suggests, seems to indicate that children are self-absorbed, but it can be more with children being unable to communicate with the outside world. Autism is a developmental disorder that happens early in life and has a strong link to hereditary, so it can greatly impact parents. Wu Yoyo has undertaken long-term study of autism and found that it is very difficult for families to manage. But in fact, it is not a new disease at all. As early as 1943, before the astronauts landed on the moon, American physician Leo Kenner identified a group of children with this disability and coined the term autism. They are extreme aloneness from practically the beginning of life and what I call a desire for the preservation of sameness. It's a diagnostic standard indicating that there may be limited interest in others and little change in behavior along with problems in social interaction and communication. All of these are some of the challenges they face. Professor Yang Zhongren, who has taught at the National Taipei University of Education and has long been involved in the study of autism, is the first to author a game which includes early intervention and early treatment in Taiwan. He says that autism is more complicated and difficult to define than a simple mental disorder. This is a good example. He likes to play with these toys and spin. You can see that this bamboo dragonfly spins and he's very happy and he brings it back to me. Because autism is a complicated issue to diagnose, in the span of just 10 years the diagnostic criteria has changed three times. So far the medical and scientific community still cannot find the exact cause. At the heart of autism is difficulty in social interaction. The main cause is genetic inheritance, which may be 90% of the cause. Let me check. Sorry about the toothpicks. 82, 82, 82. In the 1988 film Rain Man, actor Dustin Hoffman vividly portrayed a character who had this disability. And though it is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the wide spectrum that is autism. 
Early on, many children may have been diagnosed with physical and mental disorders, such as autism with mental retardation or autism with language development disabilities, or those that were not diagnosed with autism at all, as they were simply labeled as learning disabilities. According to U.S. statistics, one out of every 68 people has autism, which may translate into one out of every 20 newborns. When it comes to other diseases such as Down syndrome, the ratio is just one out of 800. At the moment, Taiwan doesn't have good census data on this issue, with the current data indicating some 13,000 people may be suffering from this illness. Of course, Taiwan doesn't have one such child out of every 68, as a more conservative estimate would be one out of every 160. At the diagnosis stage, this should not be a label, as in fact these individuals, when they go out into the community, can actually function well as no one will remember such a label. Taiwan, the number of children and youth diagnosed with autism, as well as physical and mental disabilities, is estimated to be 360,000. Unfortunately, there are only some 200 registered doctors with such training, meaning that it may take parents several weeks to see such a doctor. Parents also may fear such a label for their child and may miss the opportunity for early treatment, which can lead to future problems in the future. In our next report, we meet a student from Hualien, Taiwan. Chen Pei Wei was a New Shoot Scholarship recipient, and now she's a seventh grader. She lives a difficult life with her sister and grandmother. However, she never lets obstacles in her life get in the way. She not only has excellent academic performances, but she also performs well on the school track and field team. <laughs> Huaren Junior High School in Hualien welcomes the VIP guests with indigenous dances. Among the performers, the two students, Chen Pei Wei, stands out. We have figured out a good idea, that is, we can organize a reunion. Would you like to make smoothies together? This student who is hosting the class meeting on the stage is also Chen Pei Wei. She acts lively on various occasions at school. However, she has a different mission other than simply being a student at home. I cook most of the time, and I may ask my sister to clean the table. I always ask her to do simple things. Chen Pei Wei and her sister live with their grandmother who has poor vision. In order for her to do the laundry, Chen and her sister design something on the washing machine. My granddaughters live a difficult life, but they have gotten used to doing everything on their own when they return home. Pei Wei and her sister are always there to support their grandmother, moving the Cixi volunteers who have long cared for this family. Even though they live a difficult life, they still try the best they can to study hard. They're also filial to their grandmother. These medals and trophies show Pei Wei's excellent academic performances. Her filial piety also allows her to obtain the Presidential Education Award this year. It is out of my expectation. I think I did nothing special in my daily life. And since I'm only a child, how can I obtain this award? I was surprised. Pei Wei is also the rising star of her school's track and field team. She has established her aspirations. The teacher said that she behaves well and she has excellent academic performances. She is the top three in her grade. She also has a good attitude in training. I want to be a coach or a teacher at a school. This way I will be able to earn money and do whatever I like to do. Chen Pei Wei never lets obstacles in her life get in the way, as she has already won at the starting points of life with her strength. A refugee, Rahila, and her family moved from Pakistan to Thailand and have finally received permission to immigrate to the United States. She now volunteers as a translator at Saji Free Clinics and shows concern for others by donating secondhand clothes and money in a coin bank. 
Rahila and her family have waited for three years and they've finally been notified that they can now immigrate to the United States. She couldn't wait to share the good news as she went to the Jingso Hall to tell Zijia volunteers the good news and bring a bamboo coin bank. Even we can put one bath, it matters a lot. Whatever we have, um, we give. Mm. Whatever we were earning, we were putting in that. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's from our heart. In addition to collecting coins in a bamboo coin bank, she also donates secondhand clothing. Her family moved from Pakistan to Thailand, with Zuji providing assistance the entire way. She will never forget the help. Her mother suffers from mobility issues and was given a wheelchair, as well as help with cataract surgery. She and her sister volunteer at a monthly free clinic and have to change three different buses to do this volunteer work to pay back their gratitude. It's a blessing that you work in such an environment which you learn a lot and you see people who are suffering and you are able to be a little bit help for them. And it's so much satisfactory while working in uh, Suchi. Before getting ready to depart, Zigi volunteers pay a visit to her mother. On your uh, face always stays in my eyes, in front of my eyes, because you were the one who was taking me to the hospital and for eye surgery and brother. <laughs> this elderly woman was presented with a peace charm which can help lift her spirits. So anywhere we can yes. we'll help you accept your journey to the United States. Mm -hmm. In the mean, meanwhile, that's Taiwan. Mm -hmm. You know the love is from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this family was accompanied all the way to the immigration office in Thailand, where they happily said their goodbyes as they feel blessed to begin a new life. In Taiwan, a fashion designer has been using wrinkled papers to create dresses. With her creativity, papers have been turning to colorful and beautiful dresses that catch people's attention. As her works are shown in an exhibition, the fashion designers hoped her efforts will remind people to cherish resources in our daily life. The colorful dresses have natural and full skirts and sleeves. It is hard to imagine these are actually made with paper. These wrinkled papers are actually wrapping papers used to package flowers. Designer Li Peiti has discovered that they're suitable for making dresses. The advantages of the wrinkled papers are that they are very elastic. You can extend and bend them without worrying about the corners. I am very surprised as I never thought I could wear these. They are very special. As the fashion designer exhibits her works, she hopes to inspire more people to cherish resources. If we can be careful about choosing materials when we dress ourselves, it is better for our environment. I tell my students that when there are different materials around us, we can recycle and reuse them, including the little paper. This dress is made with paper pulp, hemp rope, cotton, and even cotton threads from a mop. As the designer uses different recycled materials to create her works, she is also reminding everyone to cherish resources. At Suji Summer Camp for parents and children in Suzhou, children were asked to express their love for planet Earth through painting on a wall. We'll leave you with the images of their creative works at the end of the program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.